Shalom and a blessed afternoon, our dear viewers. Once again, you're most welcome for our lunch hour service, and uh, it's always a delight and it's always a, an, a honor, an honor to be having you at such a time. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, I believe that uh, the Lord is doing great things in our lives. Praise God. Uh, First of all, I would love to honor and appreciate my dear mother, Prophetess Emmanuel Agnes Avako, for this wonderful opportunity that she has availed unto me once again to be ministering unto the saints. Mama, I honor and I uh, appreciate you and uh, celebrate the grace upon your life because it has made us who we are today. And also, I would love to honor and uh, celebrate uh, my pastors, Pastor Robert Wamala and uh, Pastor Helen Akio. May God bless you. May God uh, increase you. Thank you so much for your input, input in our lives. And uh, we are not the same. We are advancing because of uh, the grace upon our lives. May God bless you. May God increase you. And also celebrate the grace upon our spiritual fathers, uh, spiritual grandfather and mother. Bishop Paul Chukwemo and uh, Prophetess Miriam Obina, we celebrate and honor you and uh, we are glad to be partakers of what God has entrusted you with. And also I would love to honor and celebrate all the ministers of God that uh, stand on this platform to minister. May God bless you, may God uh, increase you. Thank you so much for blessing us. Hallelujah. And also celebrate all the ministers that work behind the scenes and uh, you our dear viewers may god bless you thank you so much for tuning in and uh, i believe you are blessed i believe that uh, you are being impacted praise god so once again you're most welcome maybe before we start off let's uh, have a brief word of prayer father in jesus mighty name we thank you father for yet another time in your presence we thank you, Father, for preservation. We thank you for the grace, Lord, that has seen us this far, Lord. Indeed, we say, Ebenezer, thus far, the Lord has helped us. Thank you so much for Monday. Thank you for Tuesday. Thank you for Wednesday. Thank you for Thursday. And thank you, Father, even for today, Lord. You have been faithful. You have been gracious unto us. You have been merciful. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. Father, once again, we are in your presence. And we ask, O oh Lord, my God, for an outpouring of your spirit, even as we're going to share, Lord. May you speak unto us, O oh God, and reveal your mind unto us, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And let your name be glorified in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for being with us. We are so honored. We are privileged. I mean, for you to leave all, whatever you're doing, all the platforms that you, at, at, that are at your disposal, but uh, chosen to be watching Iron Ministries International, we don't take it lightly. And uh, we are humbled, we are really grateful. May God bless you, may God uh, increase you. Praise God. So, I have come today with a title with a message that I titled uh, Sustaining Relevance in Your Season. Sustaining Relevance in Your Season. Praise God. Uh, praise God. We are in a season. Sorry. We are in a season of revival. We are in a season of uh, seeking the Lord. And uh, I believe the time is going to come when uh, God is going to lift us. God is going to bless us. God is going to reward us because He says that. Uh, that uh, we should call unto him and he will show us great and mighty things. And uh, remember the Lord tells us that uh, that uh, he that cometh unto the Lord must believe that he is God and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So whatever you are seeking God for, whatever you are praying for, I want to assure you that it is going to come. Praise God. It is going to come. And yesterday we looked at... Uh, we looked at uh, the fact that uh, we need to do what? We need to align ourselves what God is going to do, praise God, in our lives, praise God. We need to prepare, we need to put certain things in place, praise God, for us to access whatever God is going to, praise God. 
but uh, today I've come out with a title that says that uh, sustaining relevance, praise God, or you can say sustaining impact, praise God, in uh, your season, praise God, because it is one thing to enter a season, it is another thing to maintain the seasons, praise God. We've had so many people that have entered into their seasons well and good and uh, they've been powerful, they've been, praise God, they've been so impactful and the nations have had their voices, people have seen their works, praise God. But again, uh, in a short period of time, these people lose relevance, these people lose, uh, let's say, the anointing, these people lose... Uh, whatever they've been entrusted with, praise God, they lose relevance, praise God. And uh, I don't believe that uh, it is uh, God's plan to lift us, uh, to bring us this far and uh, abandon us. That is not in his nature. That is not the character of God, praise God. And uh, I believe you have also seen, you've, uh, uh, you, you have taken, you've taken a good look at uh, some of the people that God has lifted. Some of the people that God has uh, impact, that has, uh, that He has blessed, praise God. Even on the first of the year, uh, here uh, in our present time, praise God. For instance, uh, if you look at a man like, uh, let's say, let's talk about the kingdom, praise God. Look at a man like Benny. These are men that have sustained impact for quite a long period of time, praise God. Men like uh, Bishop Oyedepo, men like, uh, praise God, uh, Duncan Williams, praise God. Men like T.D. Jakes, these are men that have sustained impact from generations, praise God, unto even another generation, praise God. Hallelujah. How comes it is that, uh, how comes it is only them that are selected few? Don't you say, don't, 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 you, don't, you, don't, you, don't you realize that, uh, that even some other ministers that have risen, praise God, before them even in their times, praise God, but uh, all of a sudden they've uh, lost their relevance they've lost their survival they've lost their salt praise god hallelujah they've lost their flavor in their seasons praise god so what could be responsible that is what could be responsible for sustaining the impact praise god that is what i want us to look at this afternoon praise god now second timothy chapter 2 and verse 19 tells us that uh, Nevertheless, the foundations of the Lord, 2 Timothy chapter 2, let's read it, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. I love this scripture, praise God, because it gives us a basis, a basis for impact, a basis for, 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 for a foundation for our work with God. It tells us that nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord is a, that nevertheless the foundation of God stands sure having this seal the Lord knows them that are his and let everyone that names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity praise God that's what the Bible tells us hallelujah the foundation of the Lord stands sure and uh, it has this great seal upon it praise God and he says that uh, and let everyone the Bible says that, and the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of, the, of Christ depart from iniquity. Hallelujah. And then if you go on to read, it says that, but in a great house there are on, not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and made for the master's use and prepared unto good works praise god meaning that uh, if uh, if 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 uh, you are to see the hand of god praise god if you are to see the hand of god if you are to walk with god for a long period of time then uh, you must let go of certain things praise god you must uh, purge yourself praise god bible tells us that you should stay away from iniquity praise god now, one thing you need to understand is that uh, the, 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 the quality, the quality of uh, any material, praise God, the quality of any material, any, any product, affects its durability. Hallelujah. The quality of any product affects its durability. 
in that I mean I mean to say that uh, that uh, what you are made of praise God what a certain product is made of will affect its durability will affect its longevity praise God it affects how long that product can stand praise God and uh, what circumstances what situations it can stand praise God if a product is uh, made out of uh, let's say uh, fake raw materials then after a short period of time you start discovering it praise God you start knowing that okay this product here is fake I mean the raw materials were fake praise God but uh, original and authentic products are made from what uh, good raw materials and uh, the raw materials the Bible says, and the foundation of the Lord stands sure, for the Lord knows that are His, knows them that are His, and He says that if any man desires to be used by God, he should purge himself. Praise God. He should stay away from iniquity. Praise God. Now that is the raw material for any durability, for any sustainable relevance. Praise God of a child of God. Praise God. So the quality of, uh, uh, also the quality of spirituality, praise God. The quality of your spirituality, the quality of your connection, your commitment towards God will also affect the, 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 your durability and uh, the destiny of whatever you are doing, praise God. The quality of your spirituality, if your spirituality is lacking, praise God. If your spirituality is uh, having a... Uh, issues praise god you're here today you're cold today you're hot tomorrow then it affects your longevity praise god it affects your longevity praise god so how you are built will affect your vibrancy it will affect your longevity it will affect even your productivity praise god hallelujah in life hallelujah there are so many people i won't say ministers or what but uh, you know you have seen them praise god you have seen uh people that purport to be believers be, be born again but uh, once they're given an opportunity they're tested with uh let's say maybe women with uh with uh, with uh, money praise god uh, with power then you see their spirituality crumbling their spirituality is melting praise god for instance years back uh, the, 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 something happened Praise God in this nation. Now, uh, the president wanted help in certain sector. Praise God. And this sector here was so influential. Oh, there was a lot of money. Praise God. So he said that, uh, let me do away with what? These are unbelievers because I think uh, born again are going to do what? Uh, can be more trustworthy. Praise God. So he inquires of uh, one of the pastors and then the pastor sends him a bunch of young men. But just because these young men were not built, were not built like uh, spiritual, they were not built to, co to contain the, the, the pressure that comes with money, these men entered that sect of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of the government and, uh, and they were worse compared to the unbelievers. Hallelujah. They were worse. They did even worse things compared to the unbelievers. Praise God. So the quality of your spirituality will affect, praise God, it will affect the foundation on which you're built upon, will affect your productivity, your relevancy, your, your, your longevity, praise God, in uh, whatever God is going to push you into, whatever you believe in God for, praise God. So we look at examples of men who are built to last, praise God, men who are built to last. We look at uh, Abraham. Our father Abraham, uh, Genesis chapter 19 and verse 27. If you read Genesis 19 and verse 27. Genesis 19 and verse 27, it reads, um, Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. So we see Abraham had an, uh, he, he was a man that was on fire for God. 
praise God, at the place of prayer, and he had a productivity, vibrancy, and even in his, in his life, praise God. We see that he's a man that gave himself unto God continuously, praise God. He built that relationship with God, praise God. And it is on the product, it is on the account of that, praise God, that uh, he even got the what? The, 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 the name, father of many nations, praise God. God entrusted him. I believe there were so many people that, uh, there were people in his time, he wasn't the only man that believed God. He wasn't the only man that, uh, that uh, was yielding unto God. But uh, his level of commitment, his level of uh, spirituality, praise God, attracted the attention of God, attracted the, 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 the mind of God upon him, praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, as a result, Praise God. As a result, Abraham was made the father of many nations. Praise God. And he received the promises of God. Hallelujah. And another person we see is uh, Isaac. Isaac in uh, Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 63. It says that in Genesis 24 and verse 63, it reads that, uh, And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventude, and uh, he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Praise God. So we see that uh, these people had a relationship with God. Praise God. They were building that commitment, they were building that connection with God. Praise God. In uh, most of their times, there. And uh, you discover that uh, God gave them... Uh, uh, God sustained them. God sustained them for a long period of time. Praise God. They departed from iniquity. They departed from sin. Hallelujah. And gave themselves unto God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So he was a man. Isaac was a man who used to meditate and, uh, and uh, have fellowship with the Lord often. Praise God. And uh, this was his spiritual routine. Praise God. And uh, as a result, God helped him. God sustained him to the point that uh, even in times when uh, there was famine, praise God, this man was getting ideas from God. This man was getting contact direct from heaven, praise God. And then uh, we see this man called Jacob, praise God. We're looking at our patriarchs, praise God. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We see Jacob in Genesis chapter 28 and verse 20. Genesis 28 and verse 20. It tells us that uh, Genesis 28 and verse 20 tells us that and Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God will be with me and I will keep and and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so shall I come again to my father's house to in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. Praise God. Then shall the Lord be my God. Praise God. So he's a man that maintained a connection with God. He's a man that maintained an intimate relationship with God. Praise God. So, and you also see in the Genesis chapter 32 and verse 24, I'll just uh, paraphrase because uh, from 34, if you read the entire story, he wrestled with God until when God gave him his, his position. Praise God. Hallelujah. So there are men that are maintained a connection with God and uh, were productive in their times. Praise God. These were men that maintained a relationship with God and uh, they became relevant. Praise God. Even up to this generation, when we are reading the Bible and uh, you're reading out, or you, 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 you neglect, praise God, you neglect Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then you do not understand the foundation of what? Praise God, of your spirituality. Praise God. Right from Sunday school, we have been told, Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. Praise God. And uh, all those songs that uh, we were taught, all those stories, even in school, praise God. These were men that maintained the perpetual relevance. Praise God. At all, the, all, all this was built on the frequency of uh, their connection and a fear of God. Praise God. So relevancy can built it can be built. Praise God. In uh, I just managed to get three ways, but uh, these are not the final, these are not the, 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 the these are not the what 
this is not the entire list praise god so you can go and find out on your own praise god and number one is that uh, i discover that uh, number one is that the fervency of spirit praise god as uh, we have just seen our patriarchs abraham isaac and jacob these were men that were fervent in spirit praise god and they were on fire for god praise god they desired to do the will of god they desired to do the ways of god praise god and if you are going to maintain relevance praise god if you're going to maintain relevance in your season then you must be fervent in spirit praise god you do not you do not you do not uh, compromise with your spirituality you do not compromise praise god with uh, your connection with god praise god god will only give himself unto those that are that know where they're standing not that uh, you're called today you're hot tomorrow praise god today you're in church and then tomorrow you're you 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 you're visiting a shrine praise god then uh, you won't obtain help from god that will sustain you in your seasons praise god and then number two is uh, that you must surrender all praise god you surrender all and choose to walk in the will of god praise god you surrender all you surrender all and choose to walk in the path of god praise god and it is by that then uh, god will enable you praise god god will enable you and sustain you even in your season and number three which i want to which i want us to really focus on today is uh, the fear of god praise god number three is the fear of god praise god hallelujah so nothing secures nothing sustains a man nothing sustains a man in his season like the fear of God. Praise God. Nothing sustains a man in his season like the fear of God. Hallelujah. I've uh, been, a, I've been a, an ardent student of uh, these men of God that uh, sustain impact, that sustain relevance, that uh, maintain their anointing. Praise God. For five years, ten years, praise God. 15 years and uh, I've looked at their lives and discover that uh, these people have a very vocal and a very strong fear for God. Praise God. These people have chosen to neglect certain things and I've also seen men that erupt all of a sudden and then disappear. You wonder where did they touch, where did they pass? Praise God. When they have disappeared suddenly. Praise God. And uh, I've discovered that uh, the reason as to why they lost their relevancy is because they lacked the fear of God. Praise God. You've seen prophets. Praise God. Prophets come and then one year, two years, when this guy is so loud, he has gone viral. And then suddenly the guy disappears. Praise God. The guy disappears and uh, you wonder what happened to them. Praise God. And then you discover they were involved in so many what activities they were involved in uh, scandals praise god he was sleeping with women he was uh, involved in fraud praise god Hallelujah. so i've told you nothing sustains a man's destiny and future praise god like the fear of god praise god and nothing enables people build even to last Nothing enables you to build to last like the fear of God. Praise God. The fear of God is everything. Praise God. The fear of God is everything. You may look stupid. You may look like you're not updated in that generation. But let me tell you, sleeping around with a... With a yesterday, last night we had a very wonderful time with a woman of God. And she said that uh, you discover that uh, some men, some people now sleeping with their choir members they're sleeping with their servants praise god just because god has lifted them and they're operating in their season so he feels like uh, they, they fail to maintain power praise god and uh, if you at all going to maintain power then uh, the fear of god must be paramount praise god must be above everything hallelujah praise god and uh, one thing you need to understand is that uh, nothing about destinies, nothing about destinies like the absence of the fear of God, like the bankruptcy of the fear of God. So many destinies have been aborted because men, 
men who are void over the fear of God, praise God, in their walk in life, praise God, in their operation in those times, praise God. Hallelujah. So nothing about destinies, nothing about prophecy like the bankruptcy of the fear of God, praise God. Much as you have prophecy, much as you have a lot of dreams, big visions, praise God, much as you have big connections, you have what? Praise God. As long as the fear of God is lacking in your life, then you are just a time bomb that is always ready to burst, to, to erupt at a certain time. Praise God. But uh, with the fear of God, I can assure you that, uh, that, uh, that uh, you are securing your destiny. You are securing your life. Praise God. You are securing your future. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we look at examples of men that are uh, that, uh, that uh, because of uh, the bankruptcy of the fear of God, they aborted their destiny. Look at uh, Samson. If you read Judges chapter 16, we shall not read there, but you can read that story in your own time. Praise God. Judges chapter 16. This is a guy who was called to be a deliverer, to be a judge of uh, the children of Israel. Praise God. And then he goes on sleeping with every woman. You see him sleeping with the prostitutes. Bam, he bumped into Delilah, praise God. And what happened is that he lost his anointing because he lacked the fear of God. And we also see Adam, praise God. Adam, who chose to listen to his wife and uh, neglected the fear of God, praise God. He neglected the voice of God and then he was tempted, praise God. A man that was called to be ruler, a man that was called into a garden, that was full of everything. He had dominion, praise God, in the heavens, on the earth, and uh, even in the seas, praise God. But just because he lacked the fear of God, you can see the impact, even in our generation, even in our times, praise God. He lacked the fear of God. And then we see another example is a Gehazi, praise God, a servant who, who, who tried to lie unto his master, praise God. He lied, to, he lied to his master and he destroyed his destiny. I believe this guy was supposed to be among the bands of the next prophet. Praise God. He was supposed to be the next prophet. Hallelujah. But because he lacked the fear of God and went and lied to his, his master, Elisha, the Bible tells us that uh, he was even struck with leprosy. Praise God. And we do not listen to him again. We don't know how he died. We don't know how he did. He, he, where he disappeared from, praise God. All because he lacked the fear of God, praise God. Now, we look at examples once again of our people that are, that are built great destinies at the frequency of the fear of God. We look at uh, Joseph in Genesis chapter 37 and verse uh, 9. Genesis 37 and verse 9. Genesis 37 and verse 9, it reads that, And he dreamt yet another dream, and told it to his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamt a dream, and a dreamed, I, I have dreamt a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeyance to me. And he took it to his brothers, to his father, and to his brothers, and his father rebuked him, and said unto him, Now you will continue reading this story for the interest of time. Praise God. You see that uh, this guy here had a very great destiny. Praise God. This man called Joseph, he had a very great destiny. And in Genesis chapter 42, after he dreamt this dream and uh, his brother sold him off unto the Ishmaelites and uh, he ended up in the house of, Pot Miss, uh, of uh, Potiphar, the Egyptian master. Praise God. And then we see in Genesis 42 and verse 18, where he tells us, the Bible tells us that uh, he, he says that uh, he confesses his what? In Genesis 42 and verse 18, he confesses he, 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 he confesses his uh, fear of God. He says that uh, in Genesis 42 and verse 18, he says that, And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. Praise God. And we see, the, we see the product of his uh, fear of God. We see the example where he demonstrated the fear of God uh, in Genesis chapter 
I think Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50 when uh, Mason Spotify came and uh, If you read that Genesis chapter, it's a Genesis chapter. Genesis chapter, I think it is in 40, where Mrs. Potiphar does what? Mrs. Potiphar accuses him of uh, defiling. I mean, uh, entices him to do what? To sleep with her. Praise God. And, J- and Joseph says that, uh, that uh, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Praise God. Genesis chapter Genesis I think it's still in Genesis chapter 30 9 Still the same story in Genesis chapter 39 when uh, uh, yeah Genesis chapter 39 you read from verse 1 it tells us that uh, Mrs. Potiphar enticed him tried to seduce him into sleeping with her praise God but because of his fear of God we see that uh, Joseph reached a point of even running away praise God Hallelujah. And then now uh, he left his garment in the hands of Mrs. Potiphar. So she, they said, look at this Egyptian, what? This, this uh, Hebrew, what? Boy who was trying to, to rape me. Praise God. And uh, when uh, Joseph ran away, he was imprisoned. He was got in prison. Praise God. And taken into prison. Praise God. But uh, he maintained his integrity before the Lord. He maintained his fear of God, praise God, even in the prison, praise God. And we see that uh, he died, praise God. He, after, after being, uh, being what? Imprisoned. The Bible says that uh, and they came when uh, the buckler and, uh, and uh, the king's what? And the buckler and uh, the wine presser of the king were in that same prison. And then they had dreams. Then he interprets their dreams, praise God. He interprets their dreams and then, ah, uh, the story goes on then he was uh, later on uh, released and uh, taken unto Pharaoh. He was made the, the what? He was made the, 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 the prime minister, praise God, of uh, Egypt, praise God. And uh, we see that uh, Joseph maintained, uh, he was uh, taken into the prime minister's what? Into Pharaoh's what? Chambers, into Pharaoh's what? Palace at the age of 30, praise God. And then he lasted till the age of 100 and uh, 10 years, praise God, till the age of 100 years, 110 years, praise God. That is in Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 26. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 26. It tells us that, so Joseph died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt, praise God. So he sustained eight years of perpetual relevancy and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and praise God, eight years of perpetual relevancy and longevity in ministry, serving in Egypt, praise God, a foreign land, praise God, and a foreigner maintaining all that time in power, praise God, as a prime minister, praise God, just second to Pharaoh, hallelujah. So all this was all built on the foundation, on the foundation of the fear of God. Praise God. He had a generational impact. Eight years, those are two generations. Praise God. All at the frequency of the fear of God. Then the, another person we see is a Jacob, Job. Praise God. He was a man that uh, was uh, tested from all fronts. Praise God. You see in Gen- Job chapter 1 and verse 1. You read that story, you also know you all know that story where where the enemy asked for him. He was a righteous man that feared the Lord. In Job chapter one and verse one, the Bible says, And there was a man in Ulf who feared the Lord. Praise God. He was a righteous man that feared the Lord, and uh, he was a man that loved. Praise God. He was a man that loved fear, 
and fear the Lord. And we see in Job chapter 42 and verse 16, after he had come out from all his challenges, he lived for 140 years. The Bible tells us in Job chapter 42 in verse 16, it tells us that he lived for 140 years and lasted for 40 generations. Praise God. 40 generations of impact. Hallelujah. This was a relevance that was unbroken at the frequency of God, of the fear of God. Praise God. And then we see Daniel. Praise God. He was a man who lived in the very belly, praise God, of corruption in Babylon. Praise God. He was a man that lived in the belly of corruption. He was a man that lived in the fear of God. Praise God. Right in the center of corruption. Babylon was very corrupted. Praise God. But he purposed in his heart that he would not defy himself. Praise God. He was a man of notorious integrity to the extent that even his enemies, praise God, feared him. Even his enemies could attest to the fact that this man is a God-fearing man. And they say that we cannot find any what, anything to accuse Daniel of, except if it comes from his God, the God that he serves. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can that be said of you right now? Can that be said of you? All people are going to say, ah, no, no, we know where to touch. Praise God. Hallelujah. We see in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, it tells us that uh, he's a man that chose not to defile himself. Praise God. So there is no reason as to why you should defile yourself, why you should uh, corrupt yourself, your repetition. Praise God. Uh, your Christian values just because other people are doing whatever they're doing. You have no reason to do that, praise God. You have no reason to, 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 to engage in bribery and fraudster just because other people are doing it. Praise God. Stand for the truth and let the truth speak for you. Praise God. And this, we see, look at Daniel that uh, he lasted throughout the entire Babylonian captivity. He's a man that lasted. He was uh, with uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. Praise God. He came in the time of King Nebuchadnezzar. And then his son, Belshazzar, Darius the Midianite, Midianite who was also later overthrown by Cyrus. And uh, Daniel was still serving. Praise God. Even under Cyrus. Praise God. All as an administrator. Praise God. Opposing regimes came, but he was, uh, he was uh, irreplaceable. Praise God. That is what the fear of God can do. Imagine being a prime minister in the, in the, in the, in the reign of, uh, let's say, Obote, all these other presidents, Idi Amin, and then you are the prime minister, even in the regime of uh, President Museveni. Praise God. Imagine that kind of relevance. It is very possible, praise God, only by the fear of God. A man that fears God is irreplaceable. You cannot replace him. Praise God. He remains... He, he maintains his integrity even before God, praise God. And uh, once God has positioned that man, the Bible says that uh, blessed is the man that walks not according to the ungodly, praise God. But uh, his delight is in the Lord. The Bible says he shall be like a tree planted, praise God, by the riverside, not shaken by any kind of regime or winds that may come, praise God. So we look at uh, the example is Daniel, praise God. We have just seen Daniel, praise God. Hallelujah. So what does the fear of God do in these next few minutes, praise God? What does the fear of God do, praise God? Oh, how does it secure your future? How does it maintain your, your, your relevance, praise God? How does the fear of God maintain your relevance? Number one is that it establishes a hedge of divine protection and preservation. Praise God. It establishes a hedge of divine protection and preservation. One thing you need to understand is that we are living in a wicked world whereby witchcraft is like witchcraft. Praise God. The kingdom of darkness, people operating with strange spirits, praise God, are in our midst. Praise God. And uh, what will sustain you? Because uh, my mother normally says that uh, for you to... To, 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 to make it in Kampala, it is either you have a strong witch or you have uh, a stronger uh, godly foundation. Praise God. There is nothing like uh, middle ground or no man's land. No. 
it is either one side or the other side. Praise God. So for you to do what? To stand in this kingdom here, for God to build that hedge of protection, then you must be walking in the fear of God. As we see in Job chapter 1 and verse 9 to 10, the Bible says that uh, when Satan came and tried to knock, and he discovered that the material that was protecting and preserving this man called Job was not a material of just mere men. Praise God. Because this guy was fully fortified by divine protection. Praise God. And when Satan tried, he went to God. and Because you notice that when God inquired of Satan, that have you noticed my servant Job? Satan did not come on the face of the earth to start uh, uh, collecting who is this Job here that he's talking about. Meaning that Satan had already tried Job. Praise God. Satan had already tried Job and he discovered that uh, this material can only be divine. And Satan did not say that who protects him? He went and told God that isn't it you that has built a hedge of protection around him? Praise God. Meaning that uh, the fear of God, the fear of God builds a, div a, a hedge of divine protection and preservation around you. Praise God. And then that is uh, just, uh, just give you what? Job chapter 1 and verse 9. Praise God. And then we see Psalms chapter 33 and verse 18. Psalms 33 and verse 18. Psalms 33 and verse 18 reads that, Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Praise God. So the eyes of the Lord are upon them that fear him. Praise God. If you walk in the fear of God, then the eyes of the Lord. And the eyes of the Lord means that the protection of the Lord, the help of the Lord is upon you. Praise God. And uh, you cannot be intimidated. You cannot be, you cannot be visited with iniquity. You cannot be visited with uh, the attacks of the enemy. Praise God. Hallelujah. As a, uh, as a uh, Second Kings, Second Kings chapter. Before Second Kings, let's read the Psalms. Uh, the same Psalms are uh, 30, 31 and verse 23. Psalms 31 and verse 23, it reads that, uh, Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful and the plentiful rewarded, plentifully rewards the proud doer. Praise God. He preserves, praise God, the faithful. He preserves those that, that fear him. Those that walk in integrity, those that walk in purity, praise God. Those that walk according to His ways, praise God. He preserves them. And then, uh, Second Kings chapter seventeen, Second Kings seventeen and verse thirty-nine. Second Kings 17 and verse 39. It reads, But the Lord your God, ye shall fear, and ye sh he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. Praise God. He shall deliver you out of the hands of all your enemies. Praise God. So if you walk in the fear of God, the Lord delivers you from witchcraft. He delivers you from the attacks of the enemy, the attacks of those neighbors of yours that are practicing witchcraft. Praise God. The attacks of those co-workers of yours that are busy planting witchcraft at your seat. The Lord will deliver you. Praise God. The Lord will deliver you. There is a certain man who gave a story and he said that, uh, that uh, at, on his seat, I mean at his workplace, he was promoted and then... Uh, but uh, in the company, the company was uh, full of witches, people like people that were practicing witchcraft. Praise God! Evident witchcraft that uh, you would find charms even in your in your in your at, at your table under your seat. Praise God! And so, what happens is that uh, when he was promoted at this seat of, I think it was a managerial position. So when he was promoted, the Lord speaks to him and tells him that I do not sit in that seat for one week and then he sends him into uh, praying and fasting praise god and uh he got another seat praise god he got another seat and uh that looked like that very seat 
the Lord told him, do not take that seat outside, but uh, let it be. Just keep it somewhere in your office and then get another seat and sit up on it. Praise God. And then whenever he would sit, he comes to office and then he sits, he changed because he had changed the seat. When he comes and sits on this different seat, he goes out, people say, okay, now let's count for him hours. And then they would see that after some time, he comes back, praise God. He comes out of his office, goes home, and then comes back the next day, goes home, then comes back the next day. Because the Lord had already foretold him that uh, there is witchcraft that has been planted upon your seat, praise God. So if you walk in the fear of God, the Lord will preserve you, the Lord will protect you, praise God. So the fear of the Lord causes him to deliver you from the hands of your, 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 your enemies, from the hands even of your what? ancestral bondage, praise God. And uh, all the territorial principalities and wickedness that has been uh, fashioned against you, praise God. For he tells us that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper, and that every tongue that raises up against us in judgment we shall condemn it, praise God. For the weapons not to prosper, then it is God himself that preserves you, praise God. He builds a hedge of protection around you, praise God. What does the fear of God do? The fear of God provokes the help of God, praise God. The fear of the Lord provokes the help of God. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 115. Psalms 115 in verse 11. Psalms 115 in verse 11. It tells us that ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is there. He is their help and their shield. Praise God. I say the fear of the Lord provokes the help of the Lord. Praise God. Once you fear the Lord, then the Lord is indicted to do what? To help you even in times of need. Praise God. He's indicted to help you. Praise God. Once you fear the Lord, once you stand with integrity at that your workplace. Praise God. In those times when the Lord has lifted you. Praise God. He has blessed you and uh, you choose to walk in the fear of God. Then he will help you. You will not find yourself in want or lack. Praise God. So he is lifting us. He is taking us. But for us to maintain the positions that God has lifted us into, then we need to walk in the fear of God. Praise God. You cannot fear God and be abandoned. Praise God. You cannot fear the Lord and be abandoned because the hand of the Lord will continuously be upon you. Praise God. And uh, once you have obtained the help of God, it is what sustains the help of God is what sustains longevity and uh, relevancy. Praise God. The help of the Lord is what sustains longevity and relevancy, as we see in Acts of Apostles, chapter 26 and verse 23. Acts chapter 26 and verse 23. Acts 26 and verse 23. It tells us that, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people. Is it? Ah, Acts 26 and verse 22. Sorry. Acts 26 and verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Praise God. So the fear of God, once you have obtained, I mean once you have sustained the fear of God in yourself, praise God, it provokes the help of God. And it is the help of God that ensures that uh, you continue in life. You become relevant. Praise God. You become relevant because you are obtaining, you're having access to the help of God. Praise God. You continue because you're having access to the help of God. Another point is that the fear of God gives access to the secrets of God. Praise God. The fear of the Lord is what gives access to the secrets of God. And once you have the secrets of God, then you will have, it gives you the strategy. He leads you and guides you. He gives you the strategy of what to do in a particular time. Praise God. He gives you the secrets. Praise God. That uh, sustain you in your season. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalms chapter 25 and verse 14. Psalms 
Psalms 25 and verse 14. It reads that the secrets of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Praise God. So, the fear of the Lord gives you access to the secrets of God, the mind of God. Praise God. And it is the mind of God, I said in Acts of Apostles, chapter 26 and verse 22, that it is uh, the mind of God is what gives you the help of, that gives you access to the help of God. And the help of God gives birth to longevity. Praise God. Because Paul was telling us, having obtained help from God, I continue to this day. Praise God. So there are things that those who fear the Lord know that others do not. Praise God. The signs, the visions, the, 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 what? the, 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 the secrets that those people have access to. If you look at the story of Daniel, praise God, when, uh, when uh, Daniel with uh, King Belshazzar, when Belshazzar uh, chose to defile the, 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 the consecrated cups and use them for his mundane purposes. Praise God. The Bible says, And the hand of the Lord came and wrote on the wall and said, Many, many take all over, say. Praise God. And uh, Daniel, this king here, looked for someone to interpret it. All his sorcerers, all his diviners, the soothsayers, dream interpreters, all of them failed. But one man who was walking in the fear of God, Daniel, the Bible says that he came and interpreted it, and he said that you have been weighed and been found wanting. Praise God. So he's the only man that could read the signs, the visions, praise God, of his time. And as a result, the king set him above all the sorcerers, all the prophets, all the witches, praise God. Hallelujah. He set him above all them, and I can believe, and you can imagine what happened. I mean, if a godly man is above you, then are you still going to continue? In doing your wickedness, praise God, it becomes impossible because he has the final say, praise God, of what has, has to be done, praise God. Hallelujah. And we also see another example is uh, Joseph, praise God, where he gave the interpretation of uh, the dream of uh, seven years of plenty and uh, seven years of what? Of, uh, of luck, praise God. And uh, as a result, he knew the strategy that needs to, that needs to be employed in that particular time. So he, 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 he did what? He, he saved a generation because he had a access unto the secrets of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. What does the fear of God do? The fear of the Lord is a security for mankind. The fear of the Lord is security for mankind. This famous scripture, Psalms 91. He says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, Psalms 91, from verse 1, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, the Bible says, shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Praise God. And I'll say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my strength, my fortress, my God, in whom will I trust. Praise God. So you see that uh, once you walk in the fear of God, you are insured, you are, you are assured of our security. Praise God, you are assured of protection. Another thing is that uh, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord equates to wisdom. Praise God. The fear of the Lord equates to wisdom. The fear of the Lord equates to wisdom. Job chapter 28 and verse 28. Praise God. Job 28 and verse 28. He tells us that and unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Praise God. The fear of the Lord in your seasons of uh, manifestation, in your seasons of uh, relevance, is wisdom. Praise God. And it is what will sustain you in your seasons. Praise God. And uh, Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. Proverbs 9 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10 reads that uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Praise God. So the fear of the Lord equates to wisdom. Praise God. And it is wisdom that uh, sustains relevancy in your generation. It's wisdom that sustains your, 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 your relevance. It, it's wisdom that sustains, that uh, maintains your savour. Praise God. Your, 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 your flavor. 
in your generation. Praise God. So what is this fear of God as we wind we're winding up our program? Praise God. What is the fear of God? Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13 it reads that let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandment for this is the whole duty of man praise God it tells us that let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandment so the fear of the Lord is keeping his commandments staying in alignment with his word praise God with his desires praise God hallelujah you exist only to please him praise God you exist to fulfill his demands praise God when he says that in righteousness and purity thou shall you be established then walk according to that walk in purity walk in righteousness walk in holiness praise God hallelujah Praise God. Depart from all evil ways. Depart from all iniquity. The Bible told us in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Praise God. Depart from all iniquity. Depart from all evil ways, evil desires. Praise God. And whatever the world is doing. Praise God. You need to be addicted to what is right. Praise God. You be addicted to what is right and allergic to what is wrong. What displeases him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11. Ephesians 5 and verse 11, it reads that, um, And have no fellowship with the unfaithful, fruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Have no fellowship, the Bible tells us, with the unfruitful works of darkness, but uh, rather reprove them. Praise God. Do not engage yourself just because, just because uh, people are doing the same thing. Praise God. People have funny excuses that, ah, ah, after all, everyone is doing it. Just because everyone is uh, engaging in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in what? In uh, sexual activities. Just because everyone is sleeping with their bosses to be promoted, just because everyone is uh, practicing um, uh, and, uh, corruption, just because everyone is corrupt, corrupted, praise God, does not mean that you also as a child of God, you should be engaging into it. No. Praise God. We are a peculiar nation, the Bible says, a royal priesthood chosen to show forth. Praise God. You need to show forth the, 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 the glory of God. And uh, it is not the showing forth is not uh, it is not uh, it is not about uh, you showing forth the what that God has helped you God has lifted you no it is about you walking and uh, showing forth the character of God praise God you show forth the character of God you show forth what because the Bible says that uh, we shall be judges praise God so how are you going to judge when uh, your actions when your conduct is the same as those people that you're going to judge. I mean, you have to be different, praise God, for you to judge. And you're not going to judge by words, by mouth, no. You judge by your conduct. Praise God. So, you need to stay away from evil. You need to stay away from what? From iniquity, praise God. And you also need to live in a conscience that is awake and alive. Praise God. Live in a conscience that is awake and alive, not having a seared conscience. Praise God. As uh, Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four and verse uh, one. Second Timothy chapter four and verse one. It reads that uh, I charge thee, therefore, behold, before God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, at His uh, appearing and His kingdom. Praise God. One thing you need to understand is that we are all going to stand before the righteous judge at a certain time. Praise God. And that time is soon coming. Praise God. You are going to stand before the Lord and he will judge you. Praise God. Based on your works. Praise God. 
So if you are going to maintain relevance, if you are going to maintain productivity as a child of God, then this has to be part of you. Take hold of these truths here, praise God. And uh, God will help us, praise God. Hallelujah. So, for the interest of time, because our time has already been first spent, this sermon is long, but I believe we have been blessed, and uh, I believe the Lord is going to help us. Praise God. I would love to thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for watching from Monday till today, and uh, I believe you're being blessed. Praise God. I believe God is doing something in our midst, and... Uh, we are not going to remain the same. Let's only align ourselves, as I told you, praise God. We need to align ourselves and uh, if we are to sustain what God is going to release, uh, God is going to put in our hearts, then uh, we must take hold of these truths, these facts here, praise God. Hallelujah. We must take hold of these truths here and uh, they will guide us, praise God. Because there is no formula for longevity apart from uh, the fear of God, apart from what the Bible tells us, praise God, there is no any other formula, not even witchcraft, praise God, not even witchcraft can maintain you because at some point it is going to expire under the hand of God, the, 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 the hand of judgment is going to rest upon you, praise God. So give yourselves unto God and walk in the fear of God and uh, God, he cannot abandon you, praise God. He cannot abandon you because his eyes are upon them that fear him. The Bible tells us, praise God. So I would love to thank you so much and uh, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for your prayers and uh, you that has been sharing, you that has been liking. May God bless you and uh, also you that has just subscribed. May God bless you and uh, we are so honored, we are so privileged to be having you. I believe believe your lives are taking a new turn and uh, you're being blessed with these messages. Thank you so much and uh, I would love to also thank my dear mother, Prophetess Emmanuel Agnes Havako, for this great opportunity, this wonderful privilege that she has granted unto me to be ministering and uh, I honor and celebrate you, ma'am. May God bless you, may God increase you. Also maybe to remind you that we are in our weeks of revival and uh, you can tune in to our evening services from uh, Tuesday to Friday. We start from 10, and uh, you will not remain the same. Maybe let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Father, for my listeners. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful time. I give you praise and all the glory, Father, for what you have done, for the words that you have spoken unto us. Even in this time, O oh Lord, we believe, O oh God, that... Uh, you desire that you may walk in your ways and we believe that uh, you are going to release the grace for us even to walk in your fear. For the Bible tells us that a grace and peace be multiplied unto you through knowledge. Father Lord, the knowledge has been communicated and we ask oh God for an outpouring of your grace. Father, to enable us, oh God, to climb the highest mountains, to climb the highest places in you. In Jesus' mighty name, draw us closer to you, Father, and establish, oh God, your will in our hearts, establish your fear in our hearts oh lord my god that we may walk a life that is pleasing in your sight in Jesus' mighty name father lord we thank you father i pray even for my listeners oh god i pray for their the works of their hands may you bless them may you increase them may you enlarge them and those oh lord my god that are believing you father lord for turn around in their lives i pray oh god may your hand oh god that lifts may your hand oh god that blesses oh god may you father meet them at their point of need in Jesus' mighty name Lord, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' mighty name. I bless the rest of their day in the name of Jesus Christ. May you, Father, increase them, my God. May you open doors for them, Lord. May you preserve and protect them in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, and I bless your name, for it is done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So once again, thank you. Maybe for those that would love to receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, uh, repeat these words after me because I feel there is someone maybe who would love to give their lives to Christ and you're wondering how am I going to do it. Repeat these words after me. Say, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I come unto you this day and I confess my sins before you. I repent from all my wicked ways 
and from all my evil actions. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, and I reject Satan with all his works and all his uh, devices. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ from today and forth, I choose to follow Jesus and to return back never. Grant me the grace to receive, grant me the grace to walk this journey of salvation and give me the strength to walk according to your ways and according to in, in your fear. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you so much for you that has confessed those words and uh, I encourage you to kindly look for a church that is uh, that teaches the Bible, the true doctrine, a Bible teaching church, or if you are within Kampala, then you can come and join us at our ministries international, Umasho Grounds, Rugogo. Or you can uh, make use of the contacts that are on your screen, and uh, God will bless you. Okay, once again, see you. Have a blessed afternoon.